in this video we're going to look at one of the classical problems in a general chemistry course which is the adding of a strong acid or base to a buffer solution. This is really going to demonstrate how a buffer solution is going to work as a solution that is going to maintain a constant pH um, and resist change in pH due to the addition or of acids or bases. In the example that I'm showing, I have a 1.2 milliliters of one molar hydrochloric acid that I'm going to add to 25 milliliters of my buffer solution, which is a 0.1 molar benzoic acid and 0.15 molar sodium benzoate solution. The pKa of my buffer is 4.19. In a previous video, we calculated the pH of this buffer to be 4.37. It is expected that when we add hydrochloric acid to my buffer solution, although it's a strong acid, that the pH is going to be fairly close to the existing pH of 4.37. You should recognize, though, that the pH would be expected to drop a little um, from the 4.37, so I would expect my final pH to be lower, but not significantly lower from 4.37, as long as I am operating in the buffering range of my buffer. Let's look at the different components of my system. We have a lot of things going on here. We have hydrochloric acid, benzoic acid, sodium benzoate, in my mixture and so let's figure out what our major components are. So our first major component is going to be my acid, uh, my molecular acid, my weak acid which is benzoic acid. I'm going to put that in blue. We have our salt, sodium benzoate, which is going to separate into its two different ions, sodium cations and the benzoate anions, which we should recognize that the benzoate is going to be a base um, because it is the conjugate base of a weak acid. And so that's our salt. And then we have our strong acid, HCl, and it's going to completely dissociate it into our H plus and our Cl minus. Our sodium and chloride ions are going to be spectator ions, meaning they are going to be in our solution but not really impacting the reaction or not a contributor to the pH. So we call them spectator ions. Basically they're present in our solution but they aren't really part of the action here. So how a buffer is going to work is we're going to be able to neutralize our strong acid, our H pluses in our solution, with our weak base. And that's going to look at our next reaction that's going to be important here is our neutralization reaction. So our neutralization reaction is going to be our... Sorry about that. It's shown here. So our neutralization reaction is going to be... Our neutralization reaction is the reaction of our benzoate ion with our H plus acids. And they're going to react to form our weak acid back, our benzoic acid. So essentially what we're doing here is we're neutralizing our strong acid, our H pluses from hydrochloric acid, and creating more of our weak acid, which we already had present in our solution. And because our weak acid is controlled by equilibrium, it's going to generate much less H pluses in our solution at the end of the day, and it's going to have a lower contribution to our pH versus a strong acid would. So we want to look at this reaction and we need to solve this neutralization reaction to figure out our components at the end of the day. 
we have to look at this in terms of moles. So let's see. It's going to be similar to an ice table, but instead of ice, we're going to start out saying before reaction. So before the reaction, we have 25 mils of our buffer, which means we have 25 mils of each of our components in our buffer, our acetate and our, our acetate, sorry, our, our benzoate and our benzoic acid. And then we have 1.2 mils of our strong acid, the H pluses. And then we need to look at our molarities as well here. And so from our initial buffer solution, we have 0.15 molar, 1 molar of the acid, and 0.10 molar of our benzoic acid. Because we can't do this problem um, with just straight up molarity because we have different volumes of each of these components, we need to convert this back to moles. As a little aside, um, in converting into moles, it's nice to know that we can use um, this definition of molarity of millimoles. per milliliter. Um, millimoles is just going to be a lot easier to look at numerically. Um, it's a better scale for these type of problems. So if we just multiply our milliliters times our molarity, we'll get millimoles back. So we can figure out how many moles of our different components we have. So here we do the multiplication. We get 3.7 millimoles of our acetate ion, ah, I keep saying acetate, our benzoate ion, we have 1.2 millimoles of our acid and 2.5 millimoles of our benzoic acid. And our change, because this is a limiting reactant problem, our acid is going to be our limiting reactant. Um, so we're going to react all of our acid. It's going to be the re reactant molecule that runs out first. So we're going to react off 1.2 millimoles. 1.2 millimoles, so all the acid will react. And we will produce 1.2 millimoles. So here our buffer will only work as a buffer as long as we have enough of our weak acid or weak base to react with all our strong acid and strong base present. So here in that case we do. Um, and we can see what we have left over. So we'll look at after reaction, AR. And so I have 2.55 millimoles of my benzoate ion. We are out of our H pluses, and then we have 3.7 millimoles of our of our benzoic acid. And the last step we have to do with this problem is convert ourselves back to molarity. And so in order to do that, to convert back to molarity, we need to look at our volume. And now we got to look at our total volume. Our total volume is going to be our 25 mils of buffer that we had plus our 1.2 mils that we added. And so that's going to be the same as our other solution. So our total volume is 26.2 ml. And if I want to convert this back to molarity millimole per milliliter, we're going to divide. And we get new molarities of 0 0.097 molar and 0 0.14 molar of our molecular acid, our benzoic acid. 
And essentially at this point you can see that after we've done our neutralization, we have a new buffer um, that's present because all we have in it is our acid and its conjugate base. And we can look at the equilibrium problem to solve what the pH of our new solution after we've added our acid is. So in looking at this, this is our equilibrium reaction. We have our acid, our benzoic acid plus water is in equilibrium with our benzoate ion and our H3O plus. Recognize this as a Ka expression. We can look at this in terms, once again, of our ice tables. And we have our new concentrations that we just calculated here. And so we calculated we have 0 0.14 molar of our benzoic acid. The water is negligible. We have 0 0.097 molar of our benzoate ion. And then we have no H3O plus because we reacted all that away. And our change will be minus x plus x plus x. And our equilibrium 0 0.14 minus x. 0 0.097 plus x and then x. We can always solve this with our Ka expression. Um, or you can put this directly in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation where pH is equal to pKa plus our log of our conjugate base over our acid and the pKa was 4.19 plus the log of 0 0.097 over 0 0.14 and that should give you a pH equal to 4.03 so as always we're going to do our sanity check 4.03 is less than the initial pH which was 4.37 so yes our pH did drop um, if I had just added an HCl solution directly into water, the final pH um, for this situation would have been 1.3. So it dropped a, not um, nearly that strongly. So our buffer did um, do its job of keeping the pH close to the original pH um, of 4.37. We can do the exact same problem in calculating the pH of a base. So, again, we can look at this exact same buffer solution. Instead of adding 1.2 mL of hydrochloric acid, I'm going to add 1.2 mL of sodium hydroxide, a strong base. We can look back at our major components. We still have our molecular acid, our HC7H5O2. We have our benzoate ion. And we have our sodium water. But here, um, we have our hydroxide. So the neutralization reaction will look a little different than before. And now we're going to neutralize our hydroxides with our weak acid. So we're going to neutralize with these two components. And so you can set up your neutralization reaction as such, where we're going to have our weak acid reacting with our hydroxide ions, neutralizing to form the 
benzoate ion plus water. I don't know if I mentioned this on the previous slide, but it's important to note these neutralization reactions are not equilibrium. They are in one direction, so you do not represent them with a double arrow. That's an important distinction in solving these problems. They're not controlled um, by equilibrium. We can do the same setup as before with our neutralization reaction. We can do our before reaction. Um, calculate the molarity and the moles and so here after I've done that calculation like we showed previously I get 2.5 millimole of my benzoic acid 1.2 millimole of my hydroxide and 3.15 millimole of my acetate we can look at our change Again, in this particular case, the hydroxide is now going to be my limiting reactant. So minus 1.2 millimole. And then my after reaction is going to give me 1.3 millimole. Again, 0 millimole of my hydroxide. And four point nine five millimole of my acetate, acetate, sorry, my benzoate convert back to molarity. with the total volume. And I find that I get a 0 0.0496 molar solution of my acid and a 0 0.189 molar solution of my base. And we can solve the equilibrium problem by going into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So my pH equals my pKa plus log. I'm just going to write the generic form A minus over HA. Again, be very careful to keep this straight, which goes on top, which goes on the bottom. That can make a big difference in your calculation. pKa 4.19 plus log of 0 0.189 over 0 0.0496 and that gives me a pH of 4.77 so that's my new pH we added base we expected the pH to go up it was going up from 4.37 so the calculation makes sense and it is still relatively unchanged I did kind of add a fair amount of base to my solution here so you do see some change um, but it behaves as we expected it to behave it's acting as a buffer and we can see how um, this works so practice these problems again these are very classical problems use your reactions to follow them through it's much better to do that than to try to memorize um, just these equations and these formulas. If you use your reactions, you're much less likely to get things flip-flopped and mixed up. So with that, that will finish um, the main problems for the beginning of Chapter 15. Um, we'll move to titration problems um, in the next lectures. Great. Hope everyone has a great day.